What is up guys and girls? Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're here for Sohurst Kids or just out in the internet. We are glad you're here today. Welcome to So Hills Kids, where we answer big questions about God and have some fun while doing it as well. Today, we're going to be talking about Jacob. Now, if you've ever heard of Jacob, he's kind of a big deal in the Old Testament. He does a lot of, well, not so cool things, but also some really cool things. We'll see Jacob as he travels through his entire life and transforms from somebody who's trying to get his own way to somebody who trusts in God. God. So I'm super excited about that. But first, since we're talking about Jacob's transformation, I wanted to play a game with you guys, okay? And I need you to figure out the three things that change about my appearance after I come back, okay? So I'm going to change three things about me that you can see, and you're going to have to figure out what they are, okay? Are you ready? Go! Anybody got it yet? Anybody guess all three? There's three things different about me. Anything? If you guessed, I took off my hat. I took off my glasses, and I put on my hood, you're totally right. Guys, today we're talking about the change that happens in Jacob's life and the change that God brings in our life. I hope you guys are excited. Let's look at the Bible story, and then we're going to review it. I'll see you guys after that. God kept his promise to give Abraham a son. Abraham and his wife Sarah were very old when their son Isaac was born. One day, God tested Abraham. He wanted to make sure that Abraham loved God most of all. Abraham, God said. Here I am, Abraham answered. Take your son Isaac to the mountain and give him to me as a sacrifice, God said. Abraham obeyed God. He got up early the next day and left with Isaac, two servants and a donkey carrying supplies. They walked for three days before they got to the mountain where God wanted Abraham to make the sacrifice. Abraham asked his servants to stay with the donkey. We'll be back, he said. Then he and Isaac went up the mountain with the supplies for the sacrifice. Isaac saw that something was missing. My father, he said, where is the lamb for the offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. When they got to the place God had directed them, Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on top. Then he put Isaac on top of the wood. Just as Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, the angel of the Lord called out, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham stopped. Here I am, he said. The angel of the Lord said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram trapped by its horns in the bushes. He offered the ram to God instead of Isaac. Abraham named the place, the Lord will provide. The angel of the Lord reminded Abraham that God would keep the covenant he made with Abraham. God again promised to bless Abraham, to make his family as numerous as all the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashores. God promised victory over Abraham's enemies and blessings to all the earth through Abraham's family. Abraham showed his love for God by being willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. God provided a ram instead. This is how God showed his love for us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross so that we could have eternal life through him. Wow, guys, Jacob's life was pretty intense. If you saw that whole story, there are so many different little stories within the Bible about him. I want to encourage you guys to go back through and read. It's around Genesis 20 to Genesis 30. You're going to get to read the entire life of Jacob, and he has a lot of crazy stories. We see that from the very beginning, he tries to be the first one born, holding on to Esau's leg. Later, he tricks Esau into giving him his birthright, and ultimately, he tricks his own dad into thinking he's Esau. And back then, when uh, the oldest son was born, the oldest son got most of the inheritance. 
he got to lead the family. And so Jacob was jealous of that, and ultimately took that away from Esau through some deception, some tricks, and ultimately this made Esau really, really angry. So Jacob had to run. He married Rachel, Rachel and Leah, and he ended up having some kids. But ultimately, Jacob ends up having an encounter with God. And this is what we're focusing on today. You see, Jacob had spent his whole life deceiving those around him, tricking them to get what he wants. He thought that he could do whatever he wanted to get his way. And I think we feel like that sometimes too. Maybe we push everything under our bed to try and, you know, get out of chores. Or maybe we play video games to try and avoid the homework that we have to do. We want to get our way too sometimes. But what does that look like in our lives? Well, you see, there's somebody in our lives named Jesus who actually brings redemption. And Jacob had an encounter with God himself. So we're going to read about that right here in God's word. I hope you guys all have a Bible. We're going to be flipping on over to Genesis chapter 32. Isn't it crazy? We've been going through Genesis for weeks now and we're still not through it because there's so many stories about God and his people in here. So Genesis chapter 32, we're going to start in verse 22. So if you don't know, chapter is the big number and verse is the little number. Let's look at it. It says, during the night, Jacob got up and took two of two wives, his two servants, and his eleven sons, and they crossed the Jabbok River with him. After taking them to the other side, he sent them all of his possessions. And this left Jacob alone in the camp. So Jacob was alone. He sent everyone to the other side of the river, and he stayed on one side for the night. And then a man came and wrestled with him until dawn began to break. So something comes out of nowhere, and it starts wrestling with Jacob. But Jacob, he wasn't going to let go. When the man saw that he wouldn't win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and put it out of socket. Right? He literally just touched his hip and pop, it popped out of socket. Now, that probably didn't feel good. The man said, let go, for dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let go unless you bless me. And what's your, man? And what's your name? The man asked, and he replied, Jacob. The man replied, your name will no longer be Jacob, for now you will be called Israel, because you fought with God and with men and have won. That's crazy. You see, what happened here was uh, God basically came down and wrestled with Jacob. Now, ultimately, God could have easily won that fight. He didn't mean he actually beat God. That's impossible. But what he meant is that Jacob held on to God. You see, all of Jacob's life, he'd been fighting and wrestling to be on top. And then he realized what he really needs to do is hold on to God. And right then and there, God transformed him. He said, you are no longer Jacob, you are Israel. And through Israel, we get the line of the entire nation of Israel. And it is amazing. In the next chapter, Jacob and Esau actually end up making up after Esau wanted to kill him. You see, Jacob and Esau... Uh, didn't like each other. But when God called Jacob to change, Jacob did. And he made up with Esau, and they made up. And ultimately, Jacob led his family to become one of the greatest nations of their time. You see, God changed Jacob. He actually changed him so much, his whole name changed. And the reality is, he can change us as well. You see, we all have something called sin. And it causes a separation, and it causes this pain and hurt, and it causes us to hurt others. But Jesus will change us. He will wipe us clean. He will set a new slate. It actually looks something like this. Just like a dirty mirror, the reality is we're broken. We have sin in our life, and it fogs things up. It makes it hard to see. It makes it hard to get through things, right? Sometimes we know what we should do. But we end up doing the opposite, and we wonder why. The reality is, we are bound by sin. But Jesus tells us that he will save us from those sins. When he died on the cross, he broke the power of sin. And just like a guy cleaning a dirty window, Jesus will come to you and he will help wipe your sins away. He'll clean and he'll stay there with you. Even though it may take some time, as you grow in your faith, Jesus will continue to wipe away your 
sins. And through time, through prayer, and through relationship with Jesus, you will find that even though we may still sin and struggle, there will be victory in Jesus. And ultimately, despite everything, all of our sins are washed away and we are made new. You see, Jesus wipes our sins away. He makes us clean. We were dirty. We were sinners. We didn't do what God called us to do. But when we accept Jesus, when we put our faith in Jesus, he says that he will change us. He will make our hearts new. And we're not going to be perfect, right? It's going to take time. and It's going to take effort as we work and we grow in our faith and our relationship with God. But ultimately, through God, we are free. So I want to encourage you guys, if you don't know who Jesus is, find a teacher or a parent that you know knows who Jesus is. Go to Sunday school and talk with somebody there. Figure out who Jesus is. And accept him as your Lord and Savior. Because he wants to make you clean. He wants a relationship with you. And he wants you to do big things in your life. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great day. And I will see you guys next week. We're going to start talking about Joseph and Egypt. It's going to be super awesome. I'll see you guys there. Bye.